if your vote didn't matter, then why would people have fought so hard to keep you from voting? This is ESPN's Maria Taylor. In a democracy, the right to vote is the most powerful non-violent tool we have. Why is there something called voter suppression? Can anybody explain to me why in 2020, it still takes you. It's been an honor to share this almost 11 hour experience with y'all. Just to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. Why did it take till the 60s for poll taxes to be removed? Why did black people have to wait for amendments to be passed in order to vote? People have been fighting to keep people of color from coming to the polls and recognizing their power for a reason. We do not want our freedom gradually, but we want to be free now. But I'm not going to give up. If I give up, then what am I saying about my future kids? What am I saying about the future of my community? Black people in the South couldn't register to vote simply because of the color of their skin. We're all going to have to step forward, put our fears to the side, not let that narrative drive us, and let the strength of our vote, of our voice, of where we are right now matter. It has to matter. My name is Maria Taylor, and I'm voting because of voter suppression and lack of educational resources. Maria Taylor has dealt with her fair share of BS simply because she is a black woman in sports. And as Malcolm X put it, the most disrespected person in America is the black woman. When former Georgia standout and current Buffalo Bills quarterback Jake Fromm was exposed for saying only elite white people should be allowed to purchase firearms, Taylor expressed her true authentic view on the matter. As a black person in America, you go throughout the day assuming that people are not racist or that they do not have prejudice in their body because if we don't, we'd be mad all the time. Taylor took a page out of a leading voices playbook here and that voice is James Baldwin. To be a Negro in this country and to be um, relatively conscious is to be in a state of rage almost, almost all of the time. Taylor continues. And then every time it's revealed and it's someone that, you know, say you love or you've enjoyed covering, it hurts to your core. Like it is, it's a death by a thousand razor cuts. And that's how I feel when I heard about Jake Fromm. She is a Georgia grad and is speaking on her real life experience as a black woman and as a member of the media who covered Jake Fromm. When this aired, Taylor, I'm sure, received plenty of hate mail. One bigot texted her mother, father, and brother. Here is what she shared on social media. Wow, another big night for the trash affirmative action hire whose job is to literally stand around and ask stupid questions and make everything about the terroristic BLM group. What a blank joke this blank likes to put people like Fromm on blast for speaking the truth. It's positively factual that if you remove guns from blacks, we have less crime, less murder, and less trash blank behavior in general from bad people, like literally. 100% concurrently, you get the guns out of the blank hands. We watch crime drop, scientific. Yet that trash blank Maria Taylor has to talk about 1,000 knives poking through, make everything about BLM and whine about race and emotions when it's facts. You are the worst trash to watch on TV, and it's a shame ESPN is a bunch of scared basic trolls who let you do the best events. When Taylor went from NBA Countdown to being a reporter on Monday Night Football, longtime Chicago sports radio host Dan McNeil, well, took a jab at her for no reason. He wrote on Twitter, NFL sideline reporter or a host for the AVN annual awards presentation. AVN stands for adult video news. Taylor responded as well as anyone could when she was put in this difficult situation that she didn't ask to be put in. Well, Danny Dearest, if you would like to continue making sexist comments about me, please bring your misogyny with you to the NBA countdown doubleheader I'll be hosting tomorrow night. Hey ladies, remember you can wear whatever you feel confident in. She spoke of the words her father, an FBI agent for 27 years, told her brother at a young age when dealing with police the quote, comply or die. Could you imagine sitting your son down and saying, if you do not comply, you could die. A cop asks him if he can search the car. My brother complies so he doesn't die. He goes and searches his trunk and he claims that he saw sticks and stems in the back. You know where they took my brother? Straight to jail. My dad just happened to be home. And my dad said, before you say anything else, I'm an FBI agent, I'm a special agent, I've been here for 20 years, so what do you want to tell me? And the police officer said, 
Why didn't he just tell me that he was the son of an FBI agent? What if my brother didn't have the privilege of having a father who worked for the government? He would have a rap sheet right now. So let's talk about the woman that that bigot targeted in text messages. Taylor is on the front lines every day. She co-founded a nonprofit mentorship program to help black college athletes navigate life after graduation. They were coming to me as a sister and aunt as one of the few black people they saw, she said. One of the young women she took under her wing was the daughter of a mother who was killed by a white supremacist in Charleston. Grayson Doctor was encouraged to see a therapist by Taylor, which she did. She then decided to pursue a master's degree from Syracuse University. After she was accepted, Taylor paid a portion of her tuition and helped her move into to her apartment last summer. I was in tears because I had never met her mom, but that was something she would be doing, Taylor said. It's sickening the attacks that she has to endure, but as we have seen, she is as resilient as ever.